Hello everyone, my name is Calvin and today I bring you 14 amazing Axiom tips and tricks that you can learn to become a master with them all. So without further ado, let's get into it. To begin with this, I want to talk to you about one of the tools from this menu, the smear tool. This has many use cases that not everybody is aware of, especially for making structures. To access it, you just need to scroll to here, press left alt and then scroll up. This one works similarly to the stack tool with the difference that it's going to stop when we meet with another block, even if we scroll further. And why do we want that? Well, first of all, we can fill in this build without really caring how many blocks apart the two extremes are. Another use is for filling in shapes that are not in straight lines, like here under this roof line where we have a difference in height. But it doesn't stop there, because this tool is particularly useful when we want to make diagonal roofs or houses. We first need to select the entire thing, scroll it in a straight line until we reach the final point where we want our house to end, and then we align ourselves in this direction and scroll back until we meet the end and they match perfectly. Notice how it creates a perfect diagonal line in between them. And that's it, let's go to the next one. This next tip has to do with display entities. And in case you don't know what they are, I have another tutorial about them over here. But basically, they allow you to place these sort of ghost blocks and items that you can manipulate in weird ways to create cool designs like furniture or detailing for your creative builds. And you can even import custom models like this tree design or this pillar. So what I want to show you here are actually two things. The first one is how to hide this small white box. Let's say we made our design and we don't want to modify them any longer. Then we can press left alt and go to the toolbox over here, where you should find the option Show Display Entity Gizmos. Set that one to off, and now we won't be able to see those small white boxes anymore. The second thing that comes with the most recent versions of Axiom is that we can now make copies with entities. So we can use this to clone this segment, we select it first with the clone tool, then we can scroll to copy it, Bear in mind that the entities won't show in the preview, and while cloning, we could also press Ctrl F facing that direction to flip it, and that's going to mirror our entities. That would also work to flip things upside down. The next tip has to do with the freeze updates mode over here, which is very useful for cases where we want gravity blocks like sand and we don't want it to fall down. Or maybe we have illegally placed blocks like grass on top of the sand. But having this on will prevent walls and fences from connecting to adjacent blocks. And that's not something that we always want in our builds. So what we can do to connect all of this without having to change everything by hand is to open the editor mode with right shift, go to magic selection and click on the blocks that you want to connect. Then go up here to operations and find the trigger updates option. Click that and you can see how now the fences have been properly connected without breaking anything else around them. And this is especially useful for when we have these things happening on a large scale build. For instance, let's say we have all this cobblestone wall that we want to replace with mud brick walls. You can see how they won't connect and changing it by hand would take a lot of time. So that's when the trigger updates operations comes very in handy. Again, we just need to select, go to operations, trigger updates, and in the case of the walls, we need to do it twice to get them to connect fully. And there we go. This next tip is about the magic selection tool, which in my opinion is one of the most useful ones that you need to know how to use to master Axiom. And now it has a few more interesting features. The way this tool works is very simple. When we right click a block, it will select all the blocks of the same type that are adjacent to each other. That's because the selection is on block mode. So if we choose any instead, that's going to now select everything regardless of the block type. But what I want you to pay attention now is to these new options down here. The first one is the surface only option. If we turn it on, we can right click and then cut with Ctrl X to extract only the shell of the sphere, which is a great and quick way to hollow out our builds. Then we have the up and down options. If we only leave the down option on, that's going to select the blocks that are below the point where our cursor is. So I can quickly select the bottom half of this sphere using this. And the opposite if we only leave the up option. 
And this is great, because for example, we can now combine the surface option with the app option to cut the top part of this shape and use it as the roof for a tower, for instance. And the last two options are horizontal and corners. If we turn off horizontal, it will only select vertical lines from our build. I have no idea what that might be useful for yet, but it's there. But with horizontal mode on, you can have the corners option on or off. And this one actually has a very interesting use case. Let's say we have this diamond box where I have drawn with the path tool a shape with gold. We can imagine that the diamond is the terrain and the gold is where I want a pond to be. So if it's a pond, the next step for me would be to carve out the area inside the gold curve. But if I use the magic selection on its default options to select the diamonds, you can see how it's going to select everything in and out of the gold. So if I were to delete this, we are only left with that, and that's not what we want. An option would be to make the gold contour thicker. But now, that's not necessary, because if we turn the corner options off, the corners of adjacent blocks won't connect in the selection, allowing us to select either the interior or the exterior. So for this next one, I have here a build that I've been working on. So let's say that now we want to build some terrain underneath. If we go and do that with the rock tool, for example, we can see that that's going to work, but also destroy part of our build. What we can do now is to first select our build, we can use the magic selection in any mode, as we saw before, and then press Ctrl X to cut it. This is going to let us move the build around in this holographic form to the position that we want. And now, with the most recent version of Action, we can use other tools without losing the build on that form. And what that means is that we can place the house in the position that we want it to be, as a visual reference, and then start building the terrain around with other tools. It goes beyond saying how useful this feature is, especially when we need to do readjustments to large builds, because we can see exactly where things need to go. So once we are happy, we just need to click paste or paste and select so we can get the build in place in the world. And remember that you can always undo with Ctrl C and keep tweaking if you need to. This next tip is a small thing but super useful and not everybody knows about it. So let's say we have this house again in the holographic form. We all know that we can grab the handles and rotate it 90 degrees in every direction. But in certain cases, we may need to rotate it in another smaller angles, for which we can go up here and click Unlock Rotation. And with that, we can rotate it in other degrees. This one is a very detailed one, so it's breaking a lot of the stuff. But in general, it will make a great approximation. And of course, you can do so in every direction. Similarly to the previous trick, you can also scale your builds up and down. So when the build is in this holographic form, you can go up here and press rotate slash scale. That will open up a window where you should find a drop down menu with a few options. You can first scale things up two or three times with these options, and you can see that works very well, but there's an option that does a better job. And that option is nearest neighbors. So if we click there, we will find six sliders. The first three will allow us to control the rotation for every axis, and the last three will allow us to control the scaling in every dimension. So if we want to scale two times like before, then I would need to put a 2 on the three boxes. We could also reduce it to half the size by typing 0.5 instead. Again, this is not a great example because it's a very detailed build, so it's making a mess. I'd recommend using this feature on builds before detailing. But the real power to me comes with the fact that we can scale with different values in different dimensions. So let's say that we want to preserve the horizontal X and Z sizes, so we put a 1 in there, but increase the vertical Y dimension by 1.5. That way we will end up with a more elongated build, which looks kinda funny and stretched out, but it's an option. The text tool is a feature that I don't think I have ever mentioned before. It works in a very simple way. We just type here any text that we want and press right click to place it in the world. Here we select the orientation that we want, the block used, and of course the scale of the text. We move it as we need and press enter to place it in the world. This is great for when we need some quick text but don't know how to write it in Minecraft. But one cool trick about this tool is that we can tick this option off and upload and use any custom fonts. For example, in this case, I have downloaded the Minecraft font from the enchantment table, and we can use this to create text in that style. 
that we can later rotate or twist to place on a magical build, for example, as some sort of runic text. This next one is about making terrain, and it's a trick that I use a lot with the modify tool. The way this tool works is as follows. Let's say we have a cuboid over here, we can then select it and go to the modify tool. By default, it should be set to revolve, but we are going to use the last option called twist. Here, we can change the angle and the axis in which you want to perform the twist. The preview will sort of tell you what it's going to do, and then we just right-click to twist our selection accordingly. But we said we would use this for terrain, so how do we do that? Well, first we need other tools to get a rough quick sketch for our terrain. What I like to do is to first use the path tool and draw a curve with the Catmull ROM spline. In a way, that sort of marks out the flow of the terrain. In this case, I want to have a segment close to us and very low that gets progressively higher as we move to the back. So once we have the rough path for our terrain, we can go to the shape tool and start placing cylinders or other shapes, if you want, of different sizes, but making sure that they follow the gold curve that we drew before. Something like that. And we could even add a few more here in the middle to get some extra height variation. Now, if we do some smoothing and detailing, this could be the terrain. But a quick way of adding some interest is by using the twist tool as we mentioned before. So we are going to select the entire thing, we will move it up a few blocks by cutting it first with Ctrl X, and now yes, under modify we can select the parameters that we want. In general, I like to begin with a very small angle between 10 and 45, and once you're happy, just right click. And we can see how that immediately makes our simple terrain look way more interesting with soft slopes and angled cliffs. Then of course, we need to smooth the edges, perhaps twist it again slightly in another direction, and finally polish the shapes with other tools like melt, for instance. Then it's just a matter of painting it, I will use the auto shade and some tool mask to do something quickly, and there we have it, a very fast and easy terrain that we can even scale it down with what we saw before, and that's it. This next trick is also using the modify tool. So let's say we have a line of blocks like that, then we can select it, go to the modify tool, and instead of twisting we can go to rotate copies. We click on the point that we choose as the center, and the tool will create stuff like all this. But now, on top of that, we can check this box of add translation and this will let us put any number of blocks in the different x, y and z directions. So let's type 20 in the vertical and you can see how this is going to rotate and at the same time go up, creating this spiral effect. We could increase the count over here to make it more full, but the best result for these spiral staircases is achieved when instead of rotate copies we use revolve. Check add translation, increase the height in the vertical y direction and see how the result is way smoother this time. If we want to go higher up, we can do so, and also we can increase the angle over here in degrees to make it give more loops. 360 is an entire loop, so setting it to the double, which is 720, will create two loops. Or you could also input negative values to make it go in the opposite direction. This next tip is something very useful to know that I've seen a lot of people asking, and it's a way of following your builds. Let's suppose that we have this terrain that we made before and now we want to hollow it out to perhaps build it in survival. The first thing is always entering the editor menu and selecting what you want to hollow. Then go up here to operations and find hollow. Click there and that's it. You can see that now the inside will be empty. Very easy to do. If for any case this is not working for you, you can try this other method where we will use the magic selection as we saw before and check the box surface only. Now select the entire thing and press Ctrl X to cut it. You can see how this will take the shell of the build only. Very simple to do as well. This trick has to do with the path tool. You know that we can use this tool to create lines and curves going around from the points we click. Well now there's another option that is a bit hidden away and it's incredibly useful. This option down here will let us use a custom clipboard instead of the active block as our path. But what does that mean? Well, let's say that for example we have these small chain links over here, well then we can select them and copy them with Ctrl C. They should now appear on the top right corner. That's our clipboard. And while this is there, if we go to the path tool and choose the custom clipboard option, when we click it's going to use those chain links to create the path. 
and for example, we could use this over on our terrain with the catenary curve option to very quickly create hanging chains that go from one point to the other. Most of the time, it won't be perfect, but it's a great start that you can then polish by hand. And you can imagine how powerful this is. It only depends on your imagination and the clipboard that you create to use as different elements on your build. For instance, here I built this very simple bone piece and I will use it on the terrain to create some very simple fossil structures lying around. It's super fun to play around with this and I'm intrigued to see what things you are able to create with it. So if you use it, let me know in the comments what you are able to build with this. Now we are going to see a trick that I can't stop using since I found out about it. This involves the lasso select tool over here. If you've seen my previous tutorials, you may know that I have used this tool to draw a selection and carve out the shape of mountains and cliffs. That's great, and I still use this a lot. But something that I didn't know is that you can input negative values in here. When we do that, you can see that the tool is going to select blocks of air between the blocks that we are looking at and ourselves. So we can position our player in different angles, draw a selection and then drag a block inside to quickly create sloped chunks of terrain. And to me, this is a great and fast alternative way to the shape tool to start making terrain. We can do this a few more times. If we draw a smaller selection, we'll get a spiky shape. If we make it larger, we can get a smoother plateau looking terrain. We can then just fill it in with any block and that's it. Be careful though, because if we draw on top of some pre-existing shapes, the negative lasso will preserve those indentations like in here. But in general, we could easily use this in different cases to build platforms or spikes coming out from here as well. It's very quick and easy. The last one from today's video has to do with a new tool that has been included very recently, which is the new modeling tool. We already had a modeling tool under the shape tool, but now they are separated and it has a few more surfaces that are super useful. And those are the flat surface, the cut mulrum surface and the bezier surface. With the flat surface, for instance, we can start adding points, very similar to the path tool. But now over here, we can add a new row and create a new segments of points that will connect to the previous ones to form a surface. And we can add as many rows as we want. Something very important to consider here is to remember the order in which we added the points. In this case, we are going from left to right, and you can see that if we add a new row and go the other way around, from right to left, the connection will be messy. So unless you want that for some reason, you need to remember the order. You can also extrude the points by pressing E on your keyboard, and that will allow you to place a point midair. That was the flat surface, but if we choose Catmull, for instance, it will work in a similar way. But now the points that we add are going to be connected with a very nice curved surface. We all know how difficult it is to build these things by hand, so having this tool available in Axiom is a huge deal. We can use it to build organics, pieces of clothing, or sloped terrains. And all the same applies for the Bezier surface, but I'll let you play around with that one on your own. Now, just to show you an example of how useful these surfaces are, here I have done a simple frame for the wings of a dragon using the path tool. So now we will use the modeling tool with the Catmull ROM surface to fill in the interior following each segment of the wireframe, adding some rows in the middle and adjusting the points as we go. You can notice how the shapes that we need to fill in are very complicated with different curves and diagonals everywhere, but still the Catmull surface makes it super easy for us. We can make it thicker if we want, then press enter to set it in place, and now we repeat for the other segments. So there we go. We got a dragon wing done in no time. We can then just copy this, perhaps use the unlock rotation and resize it as we saw before to fit whatever organic size we are building and then just paint it. Like in this case where I went for a skulk looking dragon wing using the noise painter. And just in case you are wondering, these are the parameters that I used. And those were all the 14 axiom tips and tricks that you can use to improve your building skills with the mod. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new today. This has been Calvin, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.